Perfect. So first of all, thanks to all of you for still sticking around. We've done two days of back-to-back -back talks with almost no breaks. So <laughs> kudos to you all for the endurance. So uh, I'll try to keep it as short as possible. So even though it says 44, I'll try to hop over some stuff so it goes fast. Don't want to keep everyone here for too long. So a little bit of a background. So what Alex mentioned, this tool that, uh, that we've been building over the past three years, I think now, was built as part of uh, a project called the Melisertus uh, 2 project. So it is an EU-funded project. And the idea behind it is that we, um, um, that we wanted to build basically a tool, common tool set for the sea search, at least in Europe. So that was the initial goal. But obviously, uh, we are pretty selfish at Circle. So if we build something, we want it to be usable for us in all our use cases. So basically, we're, we're fans of building open source projects that are then reusable for other use cases as well. So even if you are not part of that community, we hope that this is still going to be useful for you. And uh, especially if you're a MISP user, uh, it should go a long way. We'll talk about why in a moment. So uh, the idea was uh, for the tool itself was that it should take care of certain tasks for the CSERT network. So these tasks included contact management. So if you've run larger communities or if you've been part of larger communities, this is a non-trivial issue. So how do I contact the partners that I want to exchange information with? Who are those partners exactly that I should be including in my exchange? Uh, how, what sort of uh, contact information do I have for them? How do I include them, for example, in MISP in my uh, sharing groups? All of these kind of questions uh, were part of basically uh, what we wanted to solve. Another thing, and, uh, and this is a bit tangential for, to the initial plan, but something that we really needed, and some other research uh, signaled that to us as well, is basically a way to uh, look up the constituency of individual uh, organizations. So that means if I want uh, so, so a compromised uh, system, I want to contact the responsible CSERT, how do I find the one that is actually responsible? Now, if you have a well-managed community such as the CSERT network, you can encode this information. What are the uh, AS's, IP ranges, and so on that your CSERT is responsible for? Then you know who to get in touch with, basically. So there are a bunch of these different things that we want to be able to capture and at least host for individual communities. The other thing is, and this, this goes back to uh, some of the hurdles we've had with both MISP and other tools, if you have tools that, inter, uh, that are meant to interconnect between different members of a community, then getting those interconnections in place actually takes time and effort. Uh, so in our case, for example, with MISP, uh, uh, our colleague Sasha, who just ran away, uh, um, uh, is actually doing quite a bit of, uh, of communication with other organizations, engaging with them, trying to get our instances interconnected, exchanging PGP keys, exchanging information about the organization that we're going to be exchanging information with. All of these things take time. Uh, and there is a lot of things that can go wrong in the manual process. So we wanted to automate all of this and allow for a system where if you're already part of a community, you can ask for individual interconnections between your various different tools that can interconnect. On top of that, we also have a bunch of different tools internally. Uh, we've talked about this plenty over the past few days that we are, uh, we as well and other co-organizations that have presented here run, for example, multiple MISP instances for different case, uh, causes. Now, managing this becomes more and more of an issue the more of those you run. Simply, it's, it's just admin work, it's user management work, it's a lot of uh, manual work that you have to do. So we wanted to have a tool that basically sits on top of our tooling and where we can control a lot of these uh, configurations, user management, and so on. Now, on top of that, uh, sharing groups, if you've used those in MISP, uh, are basically those structures that allow you to share with just a smaller part of a community that you're part of. In our case, this is something that we use very frequently. For example, if we have an incident, we're going to be exchanging the information with those involved in the incident. Perhaps they also ask for a private CSER to be also involved in the uh, incident response process. Perhaps we need to also get law enforcement on board. Whenever you're creating these sharing, uh, ad hoc sharing scenarios, you need to manage sharing groups. And all of these things require the knowledge about who you want to involve, creating these sharing groups and pushing those to the various different tools we wanted to also have a central place to do that. Now, cryptographic key lookups, uh, I 
per community have become more and more interesting as well. So uh, yesterday during the um, MISP uh, roadmap, I was talking a little bit about that protected mode thing that we introduced, which allows you to sign um, uh, the data that you send out and also expect other parties to have their signatures applied if they want to further propagate the data. And you can predetermine who should be able to do that. Now, in order for me to be able to do this, I need to know the cryptographic keys that the other organizations will use for the exchange. And again, this is something where we want to have a community-centric approach where organizations can share this information in advance so that we can build trust with the data that we receive and the data that we want to um, give to others for further uh, trans transit. So a little bit about um, about how th this whole thing started for us and why we didn't need this in, in the first place. And you will see that MISP was not designed initially for very large communities out there and very diverse communities. Initially, when we started out, most communities acted as islands. So we were part of a small sea cert network, military network that were only a few organizations exchanging information. It was also very homogenous, so we had similar expectations. We all knew each other well. So the entire contact management part was not nearly as important as it is nowadays. Nowadays, we have these large interconnected networks of communities. Uh, where we exchange information. And building trust in those, especially managing information such as uh, ownership of data and so on, becomes tricky. Even though MISP maintains this information, I have no idea who some of those organizations are that are sharing information with me. And I have no way to do lookups against that because MISP itself doesn't carry that information. So again, this is something that we wanted to solve here. Now, yeah, I think we can hop over this. So let's take a look at one example of, uh, of one of the use cases that we had internally. So these are some statistics. These are already a, a little bit older from our private sector instance. So just to give you an idea of what, uh, of what we're generally dealing with, uh, some of the numbers that are interesting here is 2,000 organizations. So this is absolutely massive in terms of how many users and organizations we, are, we have to interface with. And I would not be able to recognize more than maybe a few hundred of them. And I would have no idea who some of those are. We are doing some housekeeping directly in this tool, so in MISP, but MISP is limited in what it can store about an organization because it is not meant for that. So we, do, we don't have a lot of metadata uh, along with the organizations. Uh, you will see also here th uh, uh, that this is uh, a case where the community itself is pretty active. Uh, so we see a lot of users that are active uh, uh, frequently. We also see that 600 of the 2,000 organizations have shared data, so at least events, so not just data, but actual events. So. It, it, uh, it is a very uh, rapidly evolving and very active community that is becoming really difficult to manage. So you can see here the evolution basically on, on the new organizations. It is basically a constant flow of new organizations for, since 2016, basically. So it's um, obviously we had some peaks based on, you can kind of trace it down to certain incidents that happened when you saw a big spike of new organizations popping up. So uh, if you want to dig into this screenshot afterwards uh, and have some fun, then try to correlate it with some real world events and you'll have some, uh, some interesting results. But basically it, it's, it's something difficult to manage. So. Uh, something that, uh, uh, that has changed over the past few years is really this interconnection of the different communities. And there are different reasons for this. Initially, most of the things that we were concerned uh, uh, about were things that were targeting my sector, for example. We didn't care about anything else. We, we heard these comments a lot at conferences as well. If I'm working in the chemical industry, why should I care about what's affecting aviation, for example? It's a completely different sector, different threat actors. I don't care. But the reality is, uh, even though in terms of actual indicators, for example, this is very often true, but there are trends on how attackers are, wor are working. So they are learning from each other. They are also sharing information about techniques, tools, and so on. So we're seeing new trends that are popping up in one sector slowly percolate to all the other sectors as well. So because of this, at least sharing information about TTPs is super important across different sectors and, or, and organizations are realizing this, that um, the moment they receive this information, not necessarily so much indicators, but really the methodologies are becoming more and more interesting also from others that are maybe a bit closer to the edge of new types of attacks that are popping up. 
Uh, also, the other thing that's become really interesting, especially with election meddling and so on, is hybrid threats. So we've seen a lot of threats where you see where you see only a small portion if you're only working in a certain field. Cybersecurity, you're going to see certain types of attacks, but at the same time, you will have uh, those that are really working with election meddling or with uh, disinformation campaign uh, uh, um, uh, intelligence. See similar threats happen at the same time or similar threat actors uh, uh, engaging in threats. And when you bring these things together, you're starting to see time-based correlation, for example, or target-based correlations. And those are interesting as well. So suddenly there was more and more of a need to bring these communities together. So obviously this brings some issues uh, with itself. It's great to have these broad communities, but there are issues that you have to overcome. First and foremost, and this is going to be always the toughest one, there's going to be um, uh, something that no tool will do for you, and that is the issue of trust. So whenever you're exchanging information with a broader community, uh, you are going to be less likely to share sensitive information with, a, with different types of organizations that you, that you don't know too much. The only way to really resolve it is for communities to organize get-togethers, get, get to know each other, and build this trust uh, over time. There's also going to be an absolutely overwhelming uh, amount of points of, uh, of contact. So that means you're going to have all these organizations that you have no idea about. You need to reach out to them at certain times, and that's going to be tricky as well. This is where we can help. In terms of technical issues, and this is something that if you're running MISP, you've seen quite often, uh, by not having this centralized identity management that we had be, uh, uh, that we're introducing here, first of all, you need to manage it per instance that you're operating uh, and, and, uh, and generate the identities for each. You need to also manage UUIDs. So I'm sure that most of you have uh, dealt with the situation where you have the same organization being enrolled in different communities, exchanging information with different UUIDs. Then you have a clash, then you need to resolve it. All of these things are tricky, especially when you're enrolling uh, in, your, in your organizations. We have a process that is literally an email exchange where we ask uh, new members of our community, are you using MISP already? Do you have a UID so we encode it right away so we don't end up in the situation where a clash exists? It's tedious, and it's something that we want to get rid of. Now, finally, uh, and this is also something interesting, uh, the distribution list management in MISP is really clunky. So this is uh, so if you've dealt with sharing groups uh, in larger communities where you have recurring sharing groups, you probably run into the issue that you create a sharing group that you want to be reused, for example, for the financial sector or whatever sector in your community. And the only way to share this out to the community is to actually exchange information where this sharing group is applied. That means you have to initiate the exchange of the information. You can't just create a sharing group and whoever has the incident first uh, gets to share first because you, you don't have the sharing group percolated to the other instances yet. So again, something we wanted to solve. So uh, we already talked this, so we can hop over this. So uh, basically, uh, besides um, uh, all of these, uh, one of the aspects I haven't really mentioned too much is the fleet management part. Uh, besides just managing multiple MISPs that I already mentioned, we also wanted to have something that allows you to manage other tools as well. So that means that we, we have a, a system that allows you to interconnect Cerebrate with other tools where you can build your own connectors so that you can build those management interfaces for Cerebrate directly. We'll see some examples of what this actually looks like. Now, going back to uh, uh, what we're actually building here, and this is again my selfish mispat back on my head, uh, we're building um, uh, 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 the tool on a stack that might be eerily familiar if you're familiar with what MISP is made up of, but with newer versions of everything that we use in MISP. And there's a very good reason for that. We want to basically um, uh, harmonize the code bases of the two tools. So it is also based on KPHP, but on a much more modern version. Same thing with Bootstrap, much more modern version than what we use in MISP. For, uh, we are sharing a lot of libraries between the two tools, and we're slowly moving MISP to the, to the stack that where we've already laid the, the foundations with Cerebret. So we're using it as a stepping stone also for ourselves to make the transition easier. Something else that we didn't do in MISP, and that's a bit of a regret, uh, is we always built MISP uh, with the mindset that it would manage all the identities for the tool itself. 
which is great when you're just running one tool in a standalone way. But if you have multiple tools that all need to uh, user management, if you have multiple missed, it becomes a bit of a hurdle. So with Cerebrate, we started out already with, uh, with having the IEM that is, that can be tied to the system already in mind, uh, from the get go. So basically it is built to be integrated with an IEM system. You don't have to do it. You can run it like MISP where it manages all your users directly in its own database. But perhaps the preferred way to do it is to spin up something like Keycloak uh, that sits side by side with where you actually manage your users. Uh, besides that, I mean, uh, for uh, the core functionalities, it's very similar for MISP. We also want to have heavy auditing like we do with NIT, uh, MISP. Uh, automation is, again, super important for us. Everything is exposed to the API. So it works similarly with MISP, where you can interact with anything that you see on the UI directly on the API as well. This is something that I briefly mentioned uh, yesterday. It is also something that we're integrating directly in MISP, so it's not just Cerebret that is trying to connect to MISP and interact with it, but also the other way around. So here's an example of MISP looking up organizations in Cerebret and importing organizations from Cerebret that can be reused, create sharing groups, and so on and so forth. So here we can also manage and uh, updates as well and pull in data from a Cerebrate instance. The way the whole thing works and how we envisioned uh, uh, the entire exchange to work and orchestration part is that Cerebrate talks to other Cerebrate nodes, similar to MISP. They exchange meta information about organizations, about individuals, about um, uh, interconnections with, uh, between the different local tools. And then Cerebrate talks to, uh, to the two specific native APIs, so for example via MISP API implementation, via an implementation to Intel MQ and so on, talks to various different tools to orchestrate those. And then the actual data exchange between these tools, between different organizations, would happen through the native APIs of those tools. So Cerebrate would exchange information with another Cerebrate node where the two organizations agree, okay, we both have MISP instances, let's interconnect those things together. So they agree on Cerebrate side, and then Cerebrate will instruct the MISP instances on both sides to create an interconnection uh, link between the two tools. And from then on, the data would actually flow from MISP to MISP as it would normally. It would just take over the, or uh, the orchestration of the interconnection part. So in terms of UI, you will see that it's very similar to what MISP is nowadays, but with a more modern look and feel with a bunch of changes and improvements to the, to the layout that will also hopefully soon come to MISP when we do the, uh, the tax, uh, stack change. Now, something that is interesting here on, on this view, uh, besides that, is we're seeing the organization view that in general is very similar to what we have in MISP. So we obviously modeled it around what we have in MISP, but with a huge uh, difference that you can create custom meta fields for these sub uh, uh, objects. So we, we see here the circle organization object, and below we have two libraries that are loaded, one, the Anisa CSERT network library, and one, the CSERT constituency library. There are also libraries for FIRST and so on. And these are basically JSON uh, libraries that you can create yourself, where you can encode additional data points for each of those objects, so organizations and individuals. That means that if you have a need to encode specific types of information about your constituency, you can absolutely do it here. It's pretty flexible, so you can start uh, uh, building validation scripts directly into the format. You can start building different formatted key value pairs where you use, for example, CIDR blocks as values um, uh, uh, for the fields and so on. And then you can also manage how, how the tool will interact with, the, with different organization objects. Watch, what are the fields that are relevant in your community? What should the organization see? For example, one of the things that popped up recently that we're going to be doing for the CSERT network is we're going to also add another library here that will manage access control for other tools in the network. That means that if you want to give access to a user to be able to manage another tool that, uh, that the network has access to, then you will be able to encode that information directly here, and it will then be pushed to the IAM system, which will then grant access to those users. Um, to have access to those tools. Okay, this is basically the same idea. So he here is exactly that thing where we modified uh, on this instance which fields are shown for each organization. So in this community, for example, um, the IP ranges and the AESs were more important to us than some of the default fields. So we made them first class citizens, so to say. 
they are now showing up on the index rather than the fields that were there before. Uh, all of these are searchable, so that means that if you create a, a library with meta fields that are relevant to you, you can absolutely make those the searchable fields and the displayed fields that would show up. Yeah, this is exactly what I mentioned. Here's a, another example. So this is coming from the first directory. We have in ingestion scripts that you can build very easily to ingest from various APIs and to map to this meta syst uh, field system. So here we pulled in the data from the first directory about members. And this is the example for circle that we pulled in uh, with all the meta fields that you would see on the first API. And templates themselves, uh, if you're familiar with object templates in MIST, for example, it's the same idea. So you, you create um, uh, a descriptor JSON for the uh, fields with the validation scripts and so on that should be a, uh, that should manage the ingestion of new data. You just load it, uh, the JSON file, and you're good to go. And you can start creating data with it. So uh, if you want to have a look at some of the, uh, the existing uh, libraries, uh, you can. You just have to go to the Cerebrate GitHub uh, organization uh, uh, and the um, Cerebrate uh, um, project, and then you will see the meta fields there. Right. Uh, as for the sharing groups, uh, very similar to what we do with MISP. The only difference is we don't actually directly use those in Cerebrate. We just use this as a, a, a blueprint in the lookup system. And then you can point your MISP to uh, your community server and pull those sharing groups in. And then you create it in one place and everyone can start using it without any data being shared uh, in the first place. So yeah, there is nothing new here. If you're a MISP user, it looks exactly like it does in MISP. Now, something else, uh, and, and this is something that is an ongoing effort, again, for the signing. Currently, you can encode PGP keys for organizations as well as users or individuals, uh, as well as having multiple keys per individual or organization stored in the system. This is interesting because you will very often end up not getting uh, data signed by an actual person, but perhaps by your instance's signing key. So in that case, if I'm exchanging information with another CSERT, what I would want to use to validate it if the data is really coming from them is their MISP instances key in this case. So I would encode that together with the organization and pull that in uh, into MISP once we uh, do more with the signing on MISP side or if we wanted to create protected events. So this is just an example of what it looks like, not that interesting. Something else that we, that we uh, ourselves have as an issue is we have a lot of this information about organizations, about communities, sharing groups, and so on. But in some cases, we also have some communities that are very lax, or some information about some of the organizations that we want to have publicly available. So one of the things we, uh, we wanted to do is to have an opt-in system in Cerebrate, where you can say that on this specific Cerebrate node, the organizations should be publicly visible. So that means that other MISP instances, for example, can receive a URL that you just put on your website, where you have your listing of, of organizations that are valid, and then any MISP instance on the internet could, for example, pull that information in to validate information that is being shared in their community. Perhaps uh, you put data in on a feed and so on, and you want to give a chance for organizations to validate that information and the signatures that are coming with it. Okay, now, uh, yeah, this is basically the exchange works similarly to MISP. We have a sync interface, also connection tests, you can browse and cherry pick data, so it works very similarly to MISP. Uh, and th that is not by accident. Again, we want to basically uh, have a similar code base between the two. It will be make our lives easier with managing the code bases, as well as getting MISP up to snuff with the new uh, framework. So yeah, this is the same thing, Not so I'm not going to go that deeply into it. One thing that we do have planned, and it is not there yet, is we want to have uh, two uh, ways of synchronizing information. Right now in MISP, whenever you're pulling data from another instance, you take it as fact. So that means if, if there are 5,000 events there, we'll pull in all the events if they match your different rules that you've configured, and you absolutely trust it to update your local uh, data that was also synchronized from other sources and so on. Now, one of the things we wanted to do here is we wanted to differentiate between trusted sources, so a community main hub, versus other sources where you pull information in, where 
basically only the trusted upstream source would be taken as fact, and data coming from that source would never be overwritten by those external, less trusted sources. So we want to introduce the notion of trusted upstream sources versus just a standard interconnection. So one would trump the other always when it comes to exchanges. Okay, we already mentioned this, so I don't want to go too deeply into this. Uh, as for the management of the different tools, it works similarly to MIST modules. So you can build your own interconnection module. We have a set of helper functions for you. We have a bunch of different um, uh, things that you need to implement that are in a skeleton uh, module. So similarly, if you've ever built a MIST module, it works similarly. One small difference is it's in PHP. So sorry about that. <laughs> uh, yeah, at one point we might open it up also to a, with a pass through to Python scripts, but we haven't done so yet. So currently you're stuck with PHP and losing your sanity. Uh, some of the main functionalities that we basically have in, uh, uh, had in mind for MISP at least was to be able to configure MISP instances. That means the server settings part should be configurable directly from server. We also have uh, the ability to exchange organizations and sharing groups between the two tools if we interconnect them. Uh, to diagnose these issues with MISP, again, if you're running multiple MISP instances, being able to see whether they're working, whether you have latency issues and so on from one place would be neat. Uh, and we also want to be able to manage users. So this is still coming, but we want to be able to also enroll users directly and, and manage the users directly from one place across all the instances. So we have this need very often that we, for example, get a new employee. We have like 20, 30 different MISP instances, and we want to say, okay, we're giving them, say, admin access or just access on all those instances. Now, right now, that's a hassle. Either we script it, or we do it one by one on each instance and take up a good hour or two hours to do it. We don't want to do that. We have better things to do. Um, yeah, so that's basically, here's just a small example of, uh, of us connecting to a MISP instance. So this is a Cerebrate with a MISP connector connecting to the instance, and we can here see the organizations, for example, uh, on the MISP instance, ingest them from the MISP instance. We also have the server settings there, and some other things further below that we can manage directly from our Cerebrate instance. Right. Uh, besides that, uh, I mean, we, we built this now for MISP, the interconnection, but we want to expand this further. So if you are involved in any open source tool or proprietary tool and want to have a connector, get in touch with us. We are happy to help you build similar fleet management for other tools as well. So yeah, this is what it looks like. Here we have uh, three MISP instances connected. So you can see that one of them is showing an issue in the uh, uh, status. Currently, there are some connection issues with that one. The two other MISP instances show up okay, so we're, our, our connection works, our user is authenticating, and so on and so forth. Yep, we already talked about this. Right, and then the other thing that we want to be able to do, and this is uh, something that's already there, is we want to be able to see what other uh, organizations are running in their community, uh, in their uh, nodes. Now, whenever you're adding your connector to your local MISP instance or other tools, you can say, I want to expose this uh, to, uh, to my community. What that means is they don't have access to it, but they can see that it exists. So I can view, for example, Alex's uh, Cerebrate node if we're interconnected, and I can see, oh, Alex is running two MISP instances. One is called COVID-19 MISP instance, for example, the other Secret Squirrel Club, whatever. And then I can, through the tool, send a, re a connection request that says, I want to get access to your secret squirrel club, Miss Pinsons, would you give me access? At which point, uh, whoops, uh, Alex would get a connection request that basically says, there is this incoming request from this other party, do I accept? If I do, then basically it goes to the next step, which is the finalization step, where both parties have agreed to interconnect the tools, and both of the servers will try to encode the sync connection on both sides. Exchange, create sync users, exchange the sync user keys, and so on. So all of this is then done by the a tool within a second or two. But both parties need to agree. It's basically a three-way handshake that happens in this case. So just very quickly, what else the tool does? Uh, and I don't want to waste too much more time. 
Mailing list management, we have all this information about individuals. We want to be able to create mailing lists in our various tools so that we reach our entire community in one shot. We don't, we don't want to have 50 million different copies of all our users and keep those updated. We want to have it in one place. The ACL system works similarly to MISP. So it's, it's actually, it works exactly like that because it's a ported version of MISP's ACL system with all of its benefits, including building out a map of different endpoints and so on. If you're using that in MISP, you can do the same here. Uh, we have a, a more in-depth inbox system than what MISP uh, does. So those interconnection uh, message requests that you've seen there are part of the system. This is something that we also want to have in MISP at one point, and we want to do quite a few. We have quite a few ideas of what we want to do with this in the future, so expect to see more of that. Tagging and so on works similarly to MISP, with the exception that anything can be pretty much tagged that we decide that we want to uh, to add it to. So it's a more generic system, so we can add labels to organizations, individuals, and so on. Update system is completely re uh, reworked, so it's completely new compared to what we have in MISP. Uh, we can't wait to have this also in MISP. One of the small advantages, or pretty big advantages actually, that this gives us is being agnostic to the different MySQL flavors. So for those of you that have been asking for Postgres support in MISP for ages, once we do this change, that will come naturally with, with this update system because that's what's holding us back. Uh, apart from that, audit logs, open API implementation, exactly like, uh, like, the, like, like what you would expect in MISP. So, yeah, and, and one small thing, and I can't wait to have this in MISP, uh, the tool is themable, <laughs> so we can finally get rid of the one look that we're used to in MISP and use something more fancy, and dark mode, which Alex hates. So, for the current roadmap, what we have in mind, we want to uh, finish off whatever task we obviously have in, uh, in the scope of the Melisertus project, but after that, we have some ideas of what we want to work with. Again, the data signing part and data validation part is super interesting. So the, we just started with with this uh, when the geopolitical situation recently changed, but we have much more ideas of where we want to go with this. We want to start uh, being able to encrypt data as, as well. We want to be able to, um, to also sign, for example, sharing groups so that those are a bit more uh, protected against modifications. And then we want to start integrating with a bunch of different things. So we had some ideas for ticketing system, uh, for example, with messaging apps, and so on and so forth. So that's basically it. Uh, sorry for keeping you this long. <laughs> I know I went over time a bit. If you have any questions, now is a good time. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>